In today's tutorial, I wanna be teaching you five principles of photography that will enable you to go into manual mode and get the absolute best out of your camera. Whether you're shooting with a DSLR, a micro four thirds camera, a compact camera, any camera that has manual mode will suffice for this tutorial. And I'm gonna explain all the principles of photography that relate to manual exposure. Now this has to do with the lens selection and focusing of the lens. We're gonna be talking about your aperture selection, your shutter speed, and also ISO, and how you can balance all of these out to achieve the exact effect you're looking for. So the first thing I wanna talk about is your lens selection. If you've purchased a DSLR, quite often it will have a removable lens and it will allow you to select a different focal length of lens for your image. If you don't have a detachable lens, more often than not, you'll have some kind of zoom lens that will allow you to select your focal length there. Now, the typical focal, focal length for an indoor shot is 35 millimeters. For a portrait, standard portrait shot would be 50 millimeters. For a more artistic portrait shot, 85 millimeters. And longer lenses such as 135 can be used for even greater creative effect. And certainly you can use telephoto lenses for sports and travel also. So your lens choice will really be determined by the type of subject matter that you have in front of you. There's no right or wrong choice. It depends on the type of perspective you're looking to evoke in the image, how much rim you have in a particular scene, and what you wanna be focusing on as your subject. Now, as a general rule, the longer the lens, the more you can isolate your subject from the background. So if we're talking about portraiture, it's quite often favorable to shoot with anything beyond a 50 mil lens. 50 mil is known as the lens that best represents the way our eyes see in reality. So a 50 mil lens is a very real lens. It's great for still lifes, for realistic looking portraiture. As we push up further in focal length and get to 85 millimeter or 130 or even two or 300, we start to be able to manipulate the way the image appears and it looks less like the way we would see it in real life. So if we're looking to have something really punch out from the background and create that surreal portrait look and feel, we're generally gonna to wanna to shoot with a longer lens. So my favorite one is the 85 millimeter lens and second to that would be the 135. So both of these lenses let me get in really close to the subject and also push out the background and get a lot of background blur, which we're gonna be talking about in the next section. Now, if you're shooting architectural photography, then the principle is reversed. Generally, you want to capture as much of the scene as you possibly can, in which case you would opt for a wider lens. I'm shooting with a 35 mil lens in front of me today. So it's quite a wide scene and I'm able to capture everything in the scene that I choose. If I was looking for more of a portrait mode, I would have chosen a longer lens just to isolate the torso or the face in the image. So lens selection is the number one step when you're, when you're going for manual photography, understanding the focal length and the differences in each focal length and the type of look that you're going for. Second to this, of course, is focusing. Now, most of us rely on auto focusing. It's so good in our modern cameras. We have usually 50 sometimes hundreds of points of focus, and you can let the artificial intelligence do all the work for you. But if you're really looking for the ultimate control, sometimes it's better to flick it into manual mode and look through the viewfinder yourself and manually focus on that subject that's in the scene. So this also becomes more important when you're working with depth of field, which we're gonna be talking about in the next section. So the first two steps are selecting the right lens and then deciding whether you're going to be using autofocus or manual focus. The next thing I wanted to talk about, and probably this is the most important setting in my opinion anyway, in relation to photography, and that is understanding aperture. Now the aperture is the ring on the lens that opens and closes and lets more or less light in depending on the setting. So generally the wider open the aperture is, the lower the number. So 
This particular 85 millimeter lens goes all the way down to a 1.2 setting. So at 1.2, you can basically allow the maximum amount of light into the scene. And by doing so, you have an added effect, which is called bokeh or background blur. So the wider open the aperture, the more light comes in and the more out of focus your background is. And that's why it's important to decide whether you're shooting manual or autofocus in order to focus correctly on your subject. So those two will go hand in hand. When you go to the other extreme and close the aperture down to the smaller setting, then you'll have more objects in your scene in focus and you'll have less background blur. So your object or your subject will be completely in focus. Anything in the foreground will be in focus and also in the distant background. And that's all variable depending on which setting you choose all the way from the 1.2 and they usually go up to 18 or 22 as a closed aperture or the smallest aperture. So this will vary depending on which lens you have, but the range could be anywhere from 1.2 or some people will have a 2.4 as a beginning point all the way down to either 16, 18 or 22. Some lenses even go all the way down to 32. So that's a very small aperture. So selecting the correct aperture is the next vital step in having that full control over your image, deciding whether you wanna have more objects and subject matter in focus or less, and what sort of creative effect you're looking for. Certainly when it comes to shooting portraits, most of us really cover that background blur effect so that we can get the object and subject matter completely in focus and have that surreal looking background behind us. So that's, that's what's gonna help you determine which aperture to select. The next thing to understand is your shutter speed. Now this will go hand in hand with your aperture. As you open the aperture to the lower setting, as I mentioned earlier, the 1.2 on this lens, that will mean that you'll require a faster shutter speed. It will be basically very easy to ha handheld the camera when you're shooting at 1.2, depending on the light available, of course. If you're closing down your aperture to say F16 or F22, so you wanna get as much in the scene in focus as possible, then you're going to be letting a lot less light in. So if you're on indoors, for example, and there isn't much available light, it's not very bright, then you won't be able to handheld the camera because your shutter speed is going to be set to a much slower rate. Typically, you can only handheld a shutter speed of 1 60th of a second. Now this is changing on the modern micro four thirds and full frame mirrorless cameras who now have image stabilization, which allows you to sometimes shoot as low as 1 30th, even one quarter of a second and still give you a stable image. But as a general rule of thumb, you're looking to try and handheld at about 1 60th to give you the most stable uh, shake free image. Now, when you're applying the aperture and the shutter speed, you can use the camera's exposure meter to understand whether your image is going to be at the correct exposure as you're adjusting each of these settings to where you want them to be. So if you chose a wide open aperture and you start playing around with the shutter speed, your camera will show you which shutter speed is recommended to have the image correctly exposed. Now, if you aren't able to get the settings that you want, this is where you can start playing with the ISO, which is the sensitivity of your image sensor. Now, the ISO starts at usually 100 or 200 on most modern cameras. And this is the least sensitive ISO, which gives you the least amount of noise, grain, and it's the cleanest possible image you can get at the lower setting. So as a general recommendation, when you're looking to shoot commercial portraiture, whether it's weddings or still lives, most of the time you would wanna be shooting as low as possible with the ISO. But once again, with the advancement of modern cameras from the latest DSLRs to the new mirrorless breed of cameras, most of these can produce a noise-free image at 800 
1600 and some even 3200. As you start going beyond 3200 ISO, you'll certainly be able to notice some noise appear in the image and usually this is more prevalent in the shadow areas. So if you're doing commercial photography, quite often the aim is to keep the ISO lower. When it's more creative, if it's external photography at night, more often than not, we can get away with higher ISOs. So you can use the setting of the ISO to balance out your aperture and shutter speed and help you get in the right range when you're making those selections. So hopefully that's given you a little bit of an understanding as to the different principles involved in being able to shoot manual photography with your camera. Whether you've purchased a brand new DSLR, compact camera, micro four thirds, mirrorless, whichever you've chosen, even if you've got a brand new smartphone and you've downloaded one of the more advanced camera apps, these all emulate the traditional cameras and give you an understanding of all the settings that I've spoken about today. Hopefully this information can help you get the most out of any technology you have chosen to work with. Keep in mind, I'll be producing some more videos on these topics on the channel in the future. So if you do wanna get access to these, all you need to do is hit the subscribe button and the notification bell next to it and you'll be notified of up and coming video releases. In addition to topics of photography, I cover a lot of video topics, uh, technology in general, information about what's up and coming and new in the technology industry and digital creativity. So if that's your type of thing, feel free to subscribe. See you on the next one. Bye for now.